Hi, my name is Allison Kaplan. I'm Director of Education at the National First Ladies Library here at the National First Ladies Historic Site in Canton, Ohio. Today we're going to talk about Jackie Kennedy and one of the things Jackie is best known for is helping to preserve and protect historic sites starting with the White House and extending out to places like Grand Central Terminal in New York City. So I have a really cool picture book that we're going to read. But first of all, I want you to think about an object that you have that might be an antique or something that comes from a grandparent or a past generation. Here at the National First Ladies Historic Site, we have all sorts of objects related to First Ladies. And in fact, I love to collect political buttons. And right here, I have a Betty Ford button. Um, and so there are all sorts of cool things that you might choose to collect and preserve. They tell important stories. And right now we're going to read this story. When Jackie Saved Grand Central Station, the true story of Jacqueline Kennedy's fight for an American icon. Written by Natasha Wing and illustrated by Alexandra Borger. And the cool thing about this illustrator is that she also illustrated another book that relates to First Ladies, the Nevertheless She Persisted series by Chelsea Clinton. So that's kind of a fun connection. And I really like her illustrations. They're very different. When Jackie Kennedy became First Lady of the United States in 1961, she moved into the White House with President John F. Kennedy and their children. The President's residence was the most famous house in the country, but Jackie was dismayed to find it as run down as an old hotel. The walls needed painting, the furniture was shabby, and there were very few mementos of America's great leaders. Like a history detective, Jackie tracked down presidential treasures, the desk used by Rutherford B. Hayes, candelabras purchased by James Monroe, a chandelier bought by Ulysses S. Grant. Room by room, she restored the dreary mansion into a stately home that made Americans proud. Fourteen years later, another famous landmark, this time in New York City, needed Jackie Kennedy's help. Grand Central was the largest and grandest railroad terminal in the world on the day it opened in 1913. Some called it a work of art with its pink marble steps, majestic sculptures, dazzling chandeliers, towering windows, and cerulean vaulted ce ceiling painted with gold leaf constellations. Over the years, Grand Central blossomed into the gateway to the to the city that never sleeps. At the peak of train travel in the 1940s, it brought 65 million passengers in and out of New York City every year. But it was more than just a place to pass through. Grand Central was where politicians gave speeches, movies were filmed, revelers danced on New Year's Eve, and New Yorkers ate lunch. Artist Andy Warhol even threw an underground party there. Jackie had taken the train countless times to and from Grand Central. It stood close to where she had grown up on Park Avenue and was at the heart of the glamorous city. After her time in Washington, D.C. ended, Jackie moved back to New York City to live among the parks, museums, and magnificent buildings she adored. By the time Jackie returned, Grand Central had been at risk of losing its magnificence. Its owners wanted to build a skyscraper right on top of it. New Yorkers were outraged. Their historic building must be protected. Luckily, the government agreed. The New York City Landmarks Law was enacted, giving the city a legal means to save its architecture. Grand Central was designated a landmark and no one could change it. New Yorkers sighed in relief. <sighs> Yet, Grand Central's owners were determined to build their skyscraper, so they filed a lawsuit with the state of New York. To the surprise of many, the judge ruled that the city was wrong to keep their owners from making money. He not only gave them permission to build their skyscraper, he said they could completely demolish Grand Central. 
The New York Times ran a front page story calling Grand Central one of the most influential pieces of urban design of the 20th century. Jackie read the article and couldn't believe what was happening. To her and many of the others, destroying Grand Central would be an architectural mutilation. When Jackie had renovated the White House, she realized how much Americans cared about their history. New Yorkers didn't want to lose this link to their city's past either. So Jackie wasn't going to let that happen. Like a powerful locomotive, Jackie led the charge to preserve the landmark she and New York City loved. She joined city leaders and founded the Committee to Save Grand Central. She spoke at press conferences and made headlines. She inspired citizens to donate money. When people across the United States saw the fashionable former First Lady championing her cause, New York City's fight became America's fight. Jackie also wrote a letter to Mayor Abraham Beam saying, it is not cruel to let our city die by degrees, stripped of all of her proud monuments until there is nothing left of her history and beauty to inspire our children. She convinced the mayor to reject the court's decision and file an appeal. The campaign to save Grand Central would go back to court. New York City won the appeal, as well as another that followed. New Yorkers cried, no more bites out of the Big Apple. It looked as if the beautiful Beaux-Arts building would be saved once and for all. But the fight wasn't over. The railroad owners took their cases all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, whose ruling would be absolutely final. In a last-ditch effort to drum up support, Jackie boarded a special train called the Landmark Express. More than 300 supporters joined her on the Whistle Stop Crusade, traveling through stations in New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington, and Baltimore. Together, they made tracks for Washington, D.C., hoping to gain attention for their cause in the place where the U.S. Supreme Court's decision would be made. What a party the journey was! It was a non-stop celebration of Grand Central. Mimes, musicians, clowns, and fire-eating jugglers performed on board. Volunteers handed out blue and white Save Grand Central balloons, t-shirts, and buttons while Jackie strolled through the train cars thanking fellow passengers personally. When the Landmark Express pulled into Washington, Fans and politicians swarmed Union Station to witness the return of the former First Lady to the nation's capital and to demonstrate. If Grand Central Station goes, said Jackie to the press, all of the landmarks in this country will go as well. Jackie was worried. She had spent three years doing all she could to save Grand Central, yet the building's fate was now in the hands of the Supreme Court justices. This was the first time in history that the highest court in the nation had heard a case about historic preservation. It would not be an easy decision. For two months, everyone anxiously waited. Then on June 26, 1978, the U.S. Supreme Court announced its ruling. The city of New York had won the case. Grand Central was saved. A victory for history. One battle was over, but soon another would begin. How could the neglected Grand Central be brought back to its former splendor? Architects studied original drawings and photos from the building's heyday and came up with a master plan, which Jackie enthusiastically supported. It took almost $200 million and teams of craftsmen to get the job done. Nearly two decades passed before Grand Central shone once again. And shine it did. New pink marble steps had been crafted. Sculptures at the grand 42nd Street entrance were restored. Gold chandeliers had been stripped of their grime and paint and dirt were removed from the towering windows. The interior was flooded with light once again. Even the ceiling, blackened from decades of soot and tobacco smoke, was carefully cleaned, revealing its cerulean color and golden constellations. When Grand Central was rededicated in 1998, 5,000 people gathered in the main concourse. 
Most New Yorkers had never seen Grand Central looking so glorious, and it was time to celebrate. Yet one person was missing. Jackie had died four years earlier. Many people honored her by visiting Grand Central to write messages in her in memorial books and linger in the beautiful space she had helped preserve. Today, Vanderbilt Hall and its entry foyer feature commemorations about Jackie so that no one will ever forget her role. The fight to save Grand Central changed how people viewed old buildings. Rather than tearing them down, preservationists now had a model for how to save historic buildings all over the country, protecting our precious heritage. Grand Central remains one of the grandest and most famous destinations in the world. Every day it welcomes New Yorkers going to work, tourists visiting the sites, friends meeting for lunch, all because Jackie Kennedy and many others came together to save a landmark they loved. So Jackie started to preserve older buildings and it helped people realize that preserving old landmark is part of protecting our nation's history. And if you come to visit us here at the National First Ladies Library and the National First Ladies Historic Site, you'll see the Saxton McKinley House that Ida Saxton grew up. So that is another landmark that has been protected. Is there a place that you can think of that you would like to protect that's special to you? Write to us in the comments and let us know. Thank you so much for joining us for Fun with Flotus, and we see you next time.